As some of you may be aware, I've been on kind of a roll lately in generating YouTube videos. Um, specifically now at this point in terms of the Threefold Lotus Sutra, which I've described in a previous video, um, you now have access to major excerpts having been recited in English, two by me and one by my significant other. The first chapter, which in the Jean Reeves translation was entitled Virtuous Conduct, you are able to hear uh, with an overlay of various uh, images of Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. What I wanted to focus on in this video, relatively briefly, is the teaching of the six paramitas or six perfections. You may or may not have noticed in the first chapter of the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings, there was reference to the six practices. And at the end of that chapter, um, it's a little bit um, camouflaged, but what you would see there is a, an explication of these six practices or six perfections in accordance with how the Buddha was practicing these perfections. And so you, you see them described in a very exaggerated way. But again, I want to point this out because the six paramitas are the core practices for the bodhisattva. So for any of you that have the, the Wisdom Publications book, um, I'm on page 31, and what it says there is, For uncountable past eons, through toil and suffering, the world-honored one has studied and practiced all kinds of virtuous activities. And this is a reference to the six paramitas. The first of which is dana, spelled D-A-N-A, -A, which means donation or generosity or giving. And with each of these perfections, you can think of them as, as having the potential to be manifested in um, mundane ways or in more transcendental, transcendental or profound ways. So, for example, giving may be simply giving money to a local temple uh, or giving to a charity or giving to a person in need. Um, but at another level, it, you know, it may mean teaching the Dharma, giving the, the Dharma to others. Um, and at a more extreme level, you'll see how the Buddha is described as having manifested the paramita of dana. And I will include and I will include a little bit more of the verbiage in this reading than I did in the uh, recitation video. So it says, for the sake of human beings, heavenly beings, and dragon kings, for all living beings everywhere, he has given up all things hard to give up, goods and treasures, wife and child, country and palace. Because of the Dharma that is both for Buddhists and for non-Buddhists, he was unsparing of himself and his possessions, giving his head, eyes, bones, brain, everything as offerings to people. Okay, so that's the first paramita, giving. The second one is sila, S-I-L-A, which means keeping the precepts or conducting oneself in a moral, virtuous manner. So again, at the end of the first chapter uh, on virtuous conduct in the Sutra of Innumerable Meetings, it says, referring to the Buddha, he, he kept the Buddha's, that's with an apostrophe, uh, he kept the Buddha's pure prohibitions and never did any wrong, even at the cost of his own life. So again, we're seeing an extreme manifestation of um, the practice of sila. Third of the six paramitas is kashanti, which means perseverance or patience. Well, what, what is patience? In a sense, the flip side of patience is frustration or anger. 
Um, and this is in many ways one of the most challenging of, of the paramitas. And here, describing the Buddha's behavior, it says, even though beaten with swords or sticks, or cursed and insulted, he never became angry. So then you have the fourth paramita, which is virya, which means essentially effort or energy, zeal, that kind of notion. And it says here, uh, he never became weary or worn out. And then fifth, we have dhyana or meditation. Zen is often called the dhyana school. Um, so, in terms of meditation, relative to the quote here and the, um, the, the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings, it says, He was at peace day and night and constantly meditating. And then finally, the sixth paramita, which is the most important one, is prajna, prajna paramita. I mentioned quite a while back in another video that um, a whole series of great vehicle or Mahayana sutras are called the Prajna Paramita Sutras, the Wisdom Sutras. Wisdom is that sense of um, interconnectedness that we can get in touch with um, as part of our Buddha nature. So here it says, in terms of Prajna, he studied all the ways of things with deep wisdom, recognizing the capacities of living beings. And it goes on to say, this is why Having obtained the power of freedom, he became the Dharma king, free in the Dharma. So, um, going from that to the Threefold Lotus Sutra, which is the um, Kosai Pub Publishing Company um, translation from the 70s, just to give you, again, a different translation, but of that same essential section, it says, For infinite past kalpas, the world-honored one has practiced all manner of virtues with effort to bring benefit to us human beings, heavenly beings, and dragon kings, universally to all living beings. So, in terms of Donna, he abandoned all things hard to abandon, his treasures, wife and child, his country and his palace. Unsparing of his person as of his possessions, he gave all his head, eyes and brain to people as alms. You can see actually the most words are devoted to this first paramita of charity or generosity or donation. It's really the first, in some sense, the first stage of, on the Bodhisattva path. So, in terms of sila, or keeping the precepts, it says, Keeping the Buddha's precepts of purity, he never did any harm, even at the cost of his life. Essentially the same as the Reeves translation. And then, in terms of kshante, or perseverance, or patience, it says, He never became angry, even though beaten with sword and staff, or though cursed and abused. And as far as vira, or energy, he never became tired in spite of long exertion. And in terms of dhyana, or meditation, he kept his mind at peace day and night and was always in meditation. And as far as the ultimate prajna, prajna paramita, and again, paramita I believe another way of thinking of the term paramita is these are the practices that are necessary to travel to the other shore, beyond this world of suffering to the other shore of enlightenment or supreme enlightenment or Buddhahood. It says, Learning all the law ways with his deep wisdom he has seen into the capacity of living beings. As a result, obtaining free power, he has become the law king, who is free in the law. So, uh, again, I wanted to highlight these six paramedor practices, since while you know they're not itemized, you know, as a list 
so to speak, typically, within the Sutra of Innumerable Meanings or the Lotus Sutra, you will find references to these attributes. Um, and for those of you that want to dig a little deeper, there are also a list of ten paramitas. I'm not going to mention right now what those other four are, but the six are the core uh, perfections or practices of the Bodhisattva. And th this sutra, the innumerable meanings and the, the Lotus Sutra in a very fundamental way are scriptures that serve as a guidebook, so to speak, for the Bodhisattva and, and the um, spiritual development of the Bodhisattva as he or she moves along the path toward Buddhahood.